Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Listeners, welcome back to Hayatun Tayyibah with myself, Malma Shakira Hanja, here at Radio Islam International. Alhamdulillah, today is Thursday, so we are looking at parenting. We've been discussing 21st century parenting and we are looking at the ups, the downs, the challenges of it all. Right now, we are looking at parenting podcast and why do we need parenting podcasts why do we need good information that can help us as parents as many of us might be losing our minds now joining me on the line uh, today to discuss this pertinent topic is Lepang Khosana I hope I'm saying that perfectly correct inshallah uh, and he is a broadcaster and a creative entrepreneur with 15 years of experience within the media industry uh, Sister Lepang welcome to Radio Sam International good afternoon and thank you for your time Good afternoon and thank you to uh, all your listeners for having me and of course hello to you Shakira it's an honor to be um, on your show this afternoon. The pleasure is all mine. Now I must let you know something. I've got two kids and when I saw five kids I was like oh god you are strong. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You know everybody says that and everybody says to me how do you do it? Why do you do it? And my answer is always the same. It's just that I'm enjoying it so much. I look Mm -hmm. forward so much every day to just getting home to all my kids and just watching all these tiny little personalities grow and develop. And, you know, knowing that it's my responsibility to make Mm -hmm. sure that I'm raising them to become great adults and, you know, bigger and better parts of the world is what I'm enjoying the most. Because, you know, time really flies and very Uh soon they'll all leave the house and I'll be alone again. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. You know, I I just look at, so I've got a little one under the age, Mm -hmm. she's just a year and my my boy is about three and I, and we didn't have kids for like 13 years and so they are really truly a blessing and they've sure, got sure. the most crazy personalities so what you're saying mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it, it's lovely you know they're just watching them nurture and you know grow yeah. and become people it's so much of fun at the same time parents out there probably thinking you guys are mad we are <laughs> putting our hair <laughs> so so we are here to provide the jokes and to provide the things that are the podcast which i think is so important so for yourself yeah. right being a parent you have five kids you know what it takes i mean as much as we enjoyed there is it takes a lot so why mm-hmm. is you feel that we need parenting podcasts yeah so shakira quite plainly i think there are so many resources out there that us as parents can rely on to help us in this ongoing journey of being a parent you know to your point there's good days there's bad days it's not always fun and jokes sometimes mm-hmm. it gets very difficult and what i identified is that most of these resources are in the form of books or in the form of, you know, um, if you go to the internet, there's many, many articles. The information is there. But yeah. for a lot of people, we listen to the radio um, mm-hmm. as a source of information. We listen to podcasts as a source of information. So why yeah. not, you know, accommodate that market of people who prefer to listen to podcasts um, as a place to get education, as a place for entertainment. You know, the beautiful thing about podcasts is that you can be a dad at home or a mom washing the dishes while listening to a podcast. You can be changing a nappy while listening to a podcast. You know, it's something that can be playing in the background. So it's not necessarily something you need to stop everything you're doing in order to engage in with it and again it's it's the kind of medium that I believe is evergreen so the Uh podcast that I am hosting today and the content that I'm discussing today which could really just be about the best way to change a nappy in Uh 10, 20, 30 years time I Uh want that new parent to still be able to access this content and say sure you know I really wish I had better tips on how to change this nappy Uh and I can rely on that information so you know it's it's just the, the style of a podcast and in its um the nature of it is that it's the kind of thing that is evergreen it's long lasting Mm -hmm. you you can constantly readjust it you can change you can listen in the car you can listen at home it's much easier than you know really just having a book in your hand and being in the library so podcasting for me made the most sense because so many parents just need help you know they need Mm -hmm. assistance because we're a community of parents you know there's things that you shakira can teach me Um, Mm -hmm. you know about how I can better run my household and vice Mm -hmm. versa we need each other so podcasting for me made the most sense 
That's amazing. And, you know, the thing that I, I love the most is that it, you, it also speaks to the fact that we are incredibly busy. And so mm. multitasking is, the, you know, the foundation of 21st century parenting. is just being able to incorporate it into our busy lives. And also, I think sure. quite importantly, is, you know, breaking it down into chunks. You know, sometimes, you know, some people can, you know, read a book for four or five hours. Other people just need that five minute on the go. You know, for myself mm. and I know for many of the listeners out there, what tends to happen is <laughs> I will go through something and my child's just not sleeping, something's going on, what is going on? Mm. And then I get mm. this email that I subscribe to and I just get, well, your t- child is three years old, they're going through this kind of a growth spurt. And I'm like, okay, mm. okay, that explains it all. It really puts it into perspective. And <laughs> yeah. so that's what, uh, you know, knowledge does. It helps us to grow, mm. helps us to sometimes just put things into perspective so that we don't lose our minds, we don't lose mm. our actual control of our emotions on a day-to-day basis. Now, mm. what I wanted to ask you is when it comes to the statement, you know, people say, and I, I'm sure you've seen this online, it takes a village to, you know, to to to, 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 to bring up children, to take care of children. Mm. And then people are like, well, I'm calling, but that village just doesn't seem to be coming. <laughs> and they want to know, where do you get this village from? So yeah. for yourself now, for yourself, how do you do this? How do you balance being the mom, being the one who ha- has to always be on, you know, the one who has to listen, the one who can't just tap mm. out and mindlessly scroll on your phone? Yeah, sure. So I must agree with you. Sometimes you'll look around and you'll say, where are you, village? <laughs> um, I need you right now. And then you'll just feel so alone in this process. And I think I've been blessed enough to have experienced parenting in many different forms. So when I had my first child, I was a single mother. I was still uh, depending on help from my parents. And it was a much more difficult time. And with my other four kids, you know, now I'm married. I'm in a more structured situation and what all of that has taught me really is you have to lean on your support structure you have to force it you have to create those safe spaces so that you don't lose yourself in the process you know Shakira I'll be honest with you right now as we speak my youngest kids my three daughters are visiting Mm -hmm. their grandparents in Mpumalanga and right. that is because their grandparents always want to be with them. So I'm like, you guys can take the girls for as long as you want. Have fun. You know, there's never a right. time where I feel like I can't be myself because I don't have somebody to help me. Whether it's a neighbor, whether it's a friend who also has kids who doesn't mind babysitting. You know, I encourage parents to find a trustworthy network of people, whether it's family or friends, that you can rely on in those moments where you just need to check out and say, I just need a day. Can I just have this day to go to the spa, get a massage, do whatever I need to do, I'll be back. You need that time to yourself. And it's important to to have those people that you can rely on because, you know, no man is an island. We Mm -hmm. need each other as people. And more so when it comes to raising our children, um, we do need that help. And I think it's it's just uh, making the most of those of those um, of those networks and those circles when you need them the most. And also that'll give you an opportunity to not lose yourself. If you are a career driven individual, you still need to be able to be that even though you're a parent. And mm-hmm. the only way to achieve that is to, you know, stay true to yourself. But remember that you're staying true to yourself so that your kids can see you staying true to yourself. You you want your child to see you in all forms, all styles, all moods, all shapes, all forms, so that they also have a realistic view of what life is going to be. If you only reserve, you know, the, your good side for your kids. Mm-hmm. Like your kids, you don't want your kids to see you crying. You don't want them to see you upset. You don't want them to see you angry. You don't want them to see you stressed. They'll have an unrealistic view of what the world and what life is. So, you know, be open to your kids seeing all of you just so mm-hmm. that you know, they can also understand that, oh, okay, right now, daddy's not okay, he's a little bit stressed, and that's part of life, but after the stress, he will be okay. So uh-huh. it's it's very layered, but I believe that community is the answer. If you don't have that many friends and family that you can rely on, um, you know, there's communities online of people yeah. who are also going through what you're going through, but you can reach out to those communities and join them. I know with my podcast, you know, I've got a community of people who are so helpful. And if one parent is saying, hey guys, I'm stuck on this, please can somebody help? 
without my involvement even even i know that that parent is going to get the help that they need just because of this community of my audience who are all going through the same thing so community is so so key Mm-hmm. That's that's really great, great advice. Now, uh, Sister Luban, you know one of the uh, the statements that we have, you know, a beautiful thing is that the Salil Hakim, the Salil Mujarrab, they say, don't ask a wise person, ask a person who's experienced, and you'll mm-hmm. find that the experience will help you so much. And I've seen this in my own journey. You know, uh, little things, tiny things, like you know, mm-hmm. you're not making the baby sleep correctly, you're not making the baby, you know, just the amount of pillows you're using. Now, obviously, it can get into that place where people give uns- unsolicited advice, but mm-hmm. hey, but podcasts are a very good way for you to find out little things that you might not have the you know the, the people that might teach you that or you might not have those experiences and so i find that when you take that time to listen to podcasts you you you, you get you, you basically tap into everyone's experience in a very quick yeah. and very informative way now when it comes mm. to new moms do you feel that new moms nowadays they, they are operating from a point of view of we know best or do you feel that they are still willing to take advice when it comes to older people, people who've mm. experienced, etc. Well, Shakira, I would say it's probably a bit of both. Um, mm-hmm. You know, of course, off the bat, being a new mom or a new parent is definitely scary and there's a lot that you don't know. So you can do as much research as you want and you can read all the books in the world, listen to all the podcasts in the world, and still your child will make you realize that there are things that you don't know until you go through those things. Um, and so I think definitely new moms in this day and age are far more open-minded just because there's so much access to information. So there's a nice balance between asking for help when it's needed, reading the book when they don't understand something, but also trying to figure it out on their own, which is also an important part of being a parent. You know, being a parent is an ongoing journey. So I definitely think that all new parents in this day and age because of the time that they are becoming new parents and this digital era and really this information heavy era there are so many options for them as far as how can they better their experiences in becoming a parent how can they you know become better versions of themselves every day so that they can just be better parents and raise better kids and just be more equipped to face the daily challenges that come with raising children. So um, definitely, I think, you know, they're not really approaching it from a I know it all perspective. What I'm noticing is that they're approaching it from a let's try and adjust things perspective. Because remember, we don't need to raise our kids now the way that we were raised. It's fine to adjust methods, to try more modern ways of parenting. We live in a completely different time. If yeah. anything, we have to. You know, so I really appreciate seeing, you know, new parents um, be open-minded and say, oh, you know, I saw this online. I really want to give it a try. Um, I'm going to try it, but if my mom ever saw me doing this, you know, she wouldn't um, appreciate that or whatever the case is, but we have to carve our own methods that work for us in this day and age in our household that don't directly need to match how we were raised because we weren't raised in this very time. So Mm -hmm. I think it's an exciting time to be a new parent. Definitely. Now, you know, one of the important questions that I'm sure I must ask, and that is, you know, the different items that we might have. Now, before I ask that question, I want to mm-hmm. I want to tell you something that I've read on a forum where yeah. there was this forum of all these moms chatting and there was, you know, a, a new moms were asking, like, so what do I need to buy? Do I need to purchase that? And so all the old moms are like, well, you just need a nappy. And you don't even need it. <laughs> you, you, you don't have one, it's fine. And you must know it's basically from the fourth child to number five or number four. So I would ask you first, how is, has your parenting changed from child number one to child number five? Sure. <laughs> oh, this question. Well, look, I'll be as honest as I can be. My first right. child was my lab rat, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. he, was, he was my my test baby. Everything was so new. I was still a lot younger. And it was my first time being a mom. I did not yeah. know what I was doing. And it was all so new. And every child that I had after, I feel like I improved as far as my parenting abilities, you know, it got a little bit easier. Things were a little bit better. I could do things with my eyes closed. Why? Because I had gained that experience. So, mm-hmm. you know, from baby number one, 
to baby number five, you know, in 2014, when I had my son, you know, I was in such a completely different mind state. Uh, you know, Shakira, I was still in university. I yeah. was, um, I wasn't as confident as I am today. I was very, you know, like not sure of who I am. And that showed in my actions. You know, I was still dealing with, mm-hmm. like, with some depression as well. And things mm-hmm. in my life at that time, were not going so well for me so that showed in how um i i behaved and how i was and having my son kind of gave me a better sense of purpose and it gave me you know the the strength that i needed to just put that aside and make sure that i can be a good mom for this young boy particularly because i was also a single mom but that also taught me that if I'm going through something, I need to address it. I need to be honest with it. I can't hide it. You know, if I'm not in a good mood or things aren't going well, I need to constantly be working on myself so I can be a good parent to this child. All Mm -hmm. the way right down to child number five. Now I've grown so confident in my ability to be a mom, in who I am as a wife. In you know, I'm confident so much so that there's things that my mom wants to do with her grandkids and i say to her hey mom we don't do this in our household so you know without being disrespectful please don't do that because that's not how we raise our kids i was never able to say that many many Mm -hmm. years ago but because i know who i am i'm trying to raise my kids in a certain way i know my family values i can confidently say that and also i can confidently build a relationship with my children that's based on trust and honesty they can see me in every way shape or form because i want them to know their mother fully inside out whereas i promise you in the beginning i couldn't do that in the beginning i was like "Mm, i can't cry in front of my child Uh, if something something's happening i need to hide or they need to be good right now my kids are my they like my people they're my friends they Oh my oh they're my everything and you know they're still very young my youngest mm-hmm. is a year and a half oh that's so lovely. Old. i've got a three-year-old and then my two oldest are, are nine and eleven and i can confidently say these are my people i'm gonna have people mm-hmm. for life who mm-hmm. love me unconditionally um and so yeah the journey of parenting oh. is ongoing uh but the more experience you get the more fun you have the more you'll be able to confidently address different issues. So take it one day at a time. You know, you, you, you're making me feel so emotional just listening to you say that. And, it's, and, it's, and I think it's an encouragement to all our sisters and our young moms out there. And when you're younger and, you know, it feels so overwhelming, it can really mm. get to a point where you don't understand how to go on. And I was just looking this morning, I was gardening with my two in the garden. And we were having this just laughing at this crazy nonsense. I just thought, wow, <laughs> there's a moment in time. You know, one day I'm going to look back mm. at this moment and alhamdulillah, we praise Allah for, for these kind of moments. Now, mm. we obviously, you know, I, I know I chat too much and we talk a lot, but it's, it's really fun having you. And I really want to ask you a ton more questions. So we've got about three to five minutes left. So let's okay. quickly focus on something that I think many, many parents are you know, talking about is that as moms, we do all the work, we cook ourselves, the dads are not pulling and not playing their part. So in your mm. podcast, I know you do touch on this, you know, you touch on the importance of dads. Can you tell us a little bit about how do we bring them to the table? How do we not lecture and how do we push? I, I know it's a big topic, but just quickly. Yeah, yeah. So very quickly, I, I thought a, an important part of my show is to have the fathers involved in these conversations because traditionally, you know, fathers are not a part of the household conversations. Dads aren't cooking, they're not changing nappies, they're not putting the kids to sleep, they're not doing any of the bathing. But there are dads out there that are doing that very thing. And there are many of them so I feel like it's my responsibility as a, a mother broadcaster. I want to give those dads the platform to speak on their experiences as present, positive fathers who are playing these roles in their children's lives so that other fathers out there can, you know, no longer feel like, well, I have to be a man and the man of the house doesn't do anything. A real man does everything. A real man will participate in their child's life from the beginning a real man will know that it's important for them to be as involved as the mother is and i think so so much that all it's going to take is for more dads to stand on the roof of the house and say i love my child more dads need to do that so other dads can understand that it's okay and it's really like a modern parenting thing that you're seeing so again traditionally it's ah 
dads aren't involved in certain things. Shakira, I promise you, there are great dads out there mm-hmm. that are doing so much work, but they are not recognized because the stereotype is, well, you know, deadbeat fathers that aren't around, mm-hmm. etc. Mm-hmm. And that is, be that as it may, there are great dads who we need to give more opportunities to to speak up because all it takes is one dad to change and break that stereotype and say, yeah. Yeah, I was I wasn't even raised by my father. In fact, my father wasn't um, around growing up. But because of that, I'm making sure that I'm a part of my child's life. My son or my daughter needs me, and so I'm sacrificing to be there for them. So that's why for the show Life with Lebang, it's an mm-hmm. important part of the show to give these present fathers the platform to speak on their daily lives, and they and actually love it. They enjoy it. They oh, I can like imagine burden. They are enjoying every part of it. That's that's amazing, and I, and and you know I think we, uh, the way we speak about our fathers at home is very mm. important for the kids what they hear. Yes. You know, your dad's not yes. around, your dad doesn't do this, and you don't realize that that really plays an uh, uh, you know a mm. huge huge impact in their lives. Now <laughs> I'm running out of time, so I'm going to ask <laughs> you quickly. I'm, mm. I must say congratulations. Your podcast was recognized by the APVA. And Thank I know you. this is a huge, huge, huge uh, accomplishment for you. So congratulations on that. How did it make you. you feel and where are you going from here? Just under 30 seconds. Sure. It, it felt amazing. It made me know that my work is important. Even mm-hmm. if there's only one person listening to my show that day, that one person will get moved. Uh, it made me want to continue. And it also just made me realize that there's a world of people that need to hear the content that I'm putting together. And where to from here? You know, Life with Lebang is a podcast for now. My plans are to really make it go even further. I want to reach the African continent. I want it to go global. You know, if I can get more young parents to know that you are not alone, you are okay, we have the resources to equip you, then I'll know that my job is done. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Uh, so all the best with all your ventures. It was an absolute thank pleasure you, chatting you. to you. And I yes. hope you have a beautiful afternoon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.